Hey everybody, welcome to another Training Thursday. I am grateful that you are here. Nice to see you guys. So today we are um, going to dive deep into what is going on on the planet right now. What are we going to do about COVID-19? What are we going to do with all of the things that we're hearing about? What are we going to do with all of the doom and the gloom as practitioners in business and humans on the planet right now? So I wanted to open up the conversation because it's a conversation that needs to be had. And uh, the conversation that needs to be had because all of these festering fears are not helping anybody. And that's probably my number one tip for today. It is incredibly, hugely important to communicate right now. Communicate. So what I want you to consider, especially uh, now that it's officially being called a pandemic, is that it is really time for you to collect information and you guys are at the forefront of collecting information. You guys have a whole qualification based on acquiring information, particularly around health and well-being. So you would be acquiring information right now. You also know how to be how to be discerning around that information and how to get the facts out of that information rather than the stories that go with it. So what comes from that is often we'll say a fact, but we'll create a big story and an emotion around that fact and that becomes bigger than Ben-Hur and starts to become fuzzy around the edges and isn't clear for somebody to take action on. And for instance, we could say that um, the majority of people by 2021 will have had some type of virus. When in actual fact, there's facts around what we're talking about. We're talking about a specific virus. We're talking about time frames. And being those generalized weird stories that come around the facts means that we can create a whole different version of fear that doesn't need to be there. Now, the same thing happens with the economy. Uh, back in 2008 and 2009, when we had our last recession, I started my business and I doubled every year after that. It wasn't about the economy and all of the stories that go with it. When you're in it for the long game, and yesterday we spent, I spent time at uh, Nikum, the National Institute of Complementary Medicine, at the Western Sydney University uh, for International Women's Day and it was gold. Gee, it was amazing. It was so cool. And what every single one of those women were talking about, and go and check out my Instagram stories if you haven't already, was that if you're in it for the long game, then these are little blips that are happening along the way. And if you're in it for the long game around being in the business of being a practitioner or being a practitioner in business, then these are go there is always going to be some type of roller coaster. Now think about it. November and December, we had a conversation about uh, what's it like to be in a climate that um, is creating positions of uh, fires and bushfires and how that's affected some of our community. Then we went into floods and how that affected some of our practitioner community. Now we're in this. Yes, it's happening in a very short period of time for 2020, but there is always going to be something. And through the whole, um, whole series of talks yesterday, what they were saying is there is another way of looking at things in the times get tough parts. And that's what I want to focus on today is First, it starts with communication, not just the communication that you're absorbing, but the communication that you are getting out to your clients. Uh, the big one there when it comes to communication is I've just recently seen some um, really great communication uh, from some really big uh, companies. And we can learn a lot from these bigger companies because they've actually got uh, marketing back background. They've got funding for marketing and how these things occur. They've got funding for uh, being able to tap into experts, they've got funding for, and, and the right connections when it comes to the people 
who need to who where they need to get facts from so some of these big companies include uh, Qantas, Virgin, Virgin in particular, I, uh, I've reposted Virgin's um, uh, stance on being able to not necessarily get a refund for your flights, but being able to transfer your flights because of the repercussions that happen for COVID-19. And um, this is the thing that everyone's a little bit fearful about is it's not actually when when you're in the know about the actual um, health ramifications, the health ramifications are going to be whatever they are. It's a virus. And as we all know, as health practitioners, a virus will run a certain course and it'll have certain symptomologies to it. And as long as we stay ahead of the facts about what's coming out about that, and it's an emerging virus. So as much as everybody says, oh, it's not as bad as the flu or blah, 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 that we haven't had the same amount of people that have been infected with this virus to truly know what the scope of that is. So we, we can't even underrate it or overrate it. We have to just stick with the facts of it. And apples for apples versus pears for pears or apples for pears, there's a very different scenario to what an emerging virus that we haven't experienced before and the repercussions on how many millions of people uh, have been affected by other viruses in the past, in the situations we've had in the past, with the hospitals we've had in the past and the medicines we've had in the past. You can't possibly say it's one or the other. So uh, sticking with the facts of the story is where we're going to be able to uh, get across the most really great communication. So hello to Charlene, Lara, uh, Nina, Christine, Anita, and uh, Christine from Vic as well. So getting back to it, big organizations have created some really good communication around this this week, and I really think us as practitioners can learn from it. Now, some of the things uh, when it comes to big organizations like uh, Virgin being able to transfer is things like if you are currently um, trying to put those boundaries up around 50% for cancellations, then we're going to be talking about how can we uh, keep in, in context those cancellation policies to be able to transfer these things for a later date rather than sticking with the cancellation policies that we might have been doing before. Hence uh, why I really liked Virgin's one. Another really good one that I got uh, was this morning from Asana. And I'm going to talk about Asana a little bit more uh, shortly and how we can actually create a work from wherever uh, scenario in our business rather than be necessarily in clinic, given that some of the possibilities uh, moving forward might be remote work, which again is coming from big business, might be uh, creating education platforms, it might be diversifying. So Asana wrote, uh, we will, we, our commitment is still to quality and reliable service for all of our products. Our customer success, support, education and community teams are standing by to help you with your needs. Online, uh, so you consider this and how it could, you could just send out an email for all of your, uh, all of your clients or pop a, um, something up on Facebook about your commitment and your responsibility in a situation like this around their health and your commitment to providing the needs that they require, either through an online component uh, and online consultations or through being able to get remedies to them uh, in a certain way. So online resources are available uh, to teams around the world, including our forum. So directing your clients to where they can get access to you. Maybe you've got a Facebook group, maybe you have um, uh, webinars, virtual events, you might have um, other educational material that's online, P point them to your blog, point them to your, um, your YouTube channel for more information. And we're also up for sharing the latest tips uh, from, and getting the latest tips with our team on how to stay productive while working uh, remotely. And think about the words there, how to stay healthy whilst working remotely, how to stay healthy while uh, on a home holiday that we would like to reframe as self-isolation, which I saw, um, uh, who was it, Otto, um, Robin, talk about in another group. And this is the thing, we've got a great opportunity to reframe for so many of the, um, the peeps that we help because they're getting fed a certain communication and we can actually tilt that communication hold it hold it lightly as a, a 
we've got to you know give them the facts but we also have an opportunity to be able to frame it so that it isn't as scary and as horrible as um, the media seems to be putting out at the moment so um, if you haven't set out any communication about COVID-19 because you don't want to add to the fear mongering or whatever you're missing a massive opportunity to be there as a trusted advisor and be part of the conversation that everybody is having right now. There isn't a day that has gone by for me uh, in the past probably week where a conversation hasn't gone to this. And you have to be part of that conversation because you're a health provider. So in doing that, uh, something like we have committed and have responsibility to, um, and, and you know, we, we have committed responsibility to quality and professionalism to empower and educate our clients and ensuring um, access to quality natural health care and the, um, you know, most up-to-date information that we can get for you. So that kind of thing is, is, is really important to inform clients that you're looking after them and you're looking out for them as well. So you're filtering through information for yourself and your family. I've seen it. You're in other Facebook groups going, what can we do? What's the, what's the latest on um, who, who's the guy that sent out that um, info page that everybody's downloaded uh, for herbal remedies as well as um, frontline defense for nutritional remedies? You can do the same thing for your clients and begging for it. And keep in mind that you're utilizing the words like immune and you're utilizing immunity and you're utilizing, you know, viruses, you're utilizing other words, but you can still use the terms that um, people are using because that's what they're Googling for and that's what they need to hear from you. So we've got that. First part is communication. Second part is that uh, the facts for us as business owners, I'm going to speak to the business and mindset perspective for a little bit because that's where um, I'm sitting in at the moment. Sam and Nick, hello from uh, down your way. How's it going? Okay, so um, from a business and mindset perspective, now, yes, you've got to communicate from a health perspective with all of your clients and I highly suggest that you step up and share what you know and um, be the trusted advisor that they need. In the background of your minds as well is that there is um, the economics of what's happening and again I'd like to repoint out that in the last um, in the last recession or um, GFC hit uh, of 2008-2009 it's actually when some of the um, biggest growth we've had in women in business particularly on online started to move forward 2008-2009-2010 and uh, it grew from there so there is some of the biggest growth can happen for the small to medium enterprise, which is what we're part of. Uh, economically, things are happening. Uh, and supply chain-wise, things are happening for our, our uh, industry and profession, which you'll see that certain suppliers are sending emails out to keep in communication about the supply chains because the vast majority of our pharmaceuticals and our nutraceuticals come from China. Uh, they're either packed in China or the herbs move through China and um, those large companies are having supply chain issues. So uh, making sure that uh, we're aware of these things and noticing the facts. Yes, things coming out of China are going to be a problem. Yes, uh, economically we're not ideal. Yes, conferences and large events are being cancelled and uh, schools are, around the world, are, uh, some some of these uh, places are closing and uh, workplaces are starting to try and diversify and um, disrupt the way that they're working so that they can continue to provide the services and the goods that they have promised. How can we overcome those things without making a big story about what all that means? So overcoming those things without making a story is economically there is always going to be people looking for information around health and well-being. So we are perfectly placed to be able to provide that information and provide it in a diverse and disruptive way. So we have the opportunity to do online consults. And if you haven't signed up for Zoom or some other form of online uh, consultation service, Skype or something else, um, I highly prefer, 
Zoom because it has a, a level of security that isn't available in others um, just yet for the, um, the sharing of health information. So if you haven't done that, go and do that. Diversifying the way that you do business and the way that you work is going to be really, really important in the, in the next couple of months. And uh, in all honesty, the next couple of years, we I've been banging on about people trying to set people up to work from their phone, working from wherever, being able to access all of their clients' details on, online at any point in time, being able to send out an invoice at any point in time, being able to order somebody's product at any point in time. Uh, being able to get online and give them a consultation wherever you happen to be. An acute consultation online is just uh, such peace of mind for so many people who already know, like and trust you already and they can't get to see you. So if you haven't done it already, go and sign up with some form of online consultative um, uh, experience. So economically, we've ticked that. Um, a supply chains. If you are only with one of the suppliers or only with one of the warehousing of suppliers, so that's uh, Oborn, Araya, Vitaly, if you're only with one of those, go and open up an account with the others because if supply chains change, some places will have a certain product and other places will not. Uh, make sure you are in contact with your suppliers and the industry because, and you're on their uh, email newsletter list because that's how they're going to be in contact with you. If you have any questions for those particular companies or for the education services, go and speak to them specifically. Don't just randomly ask the questions elsewhere. Go and speak to them. They're there and they want to communicate uh, and show up for the conversation as well, the same way as we do. Uh, so making sure that you have other supply chains available is really important. But what would be even better and would, would but something that I have been really embracing these past couple of weeks is how can we do this locally? And um, how can we get some of these uh, supplies locally? So if you're already, you know, creating your teas because you've got some, some big shipment of tea from somewhere else, how can you get those teas locally? How can you get those... Um, uh, I don't know what else that you, you guys would be getting. Uh, how can you get some of the uh, local lip balms? How can you get some of the local, um, how could you create uh, sniffer boxes for teas and menthol and things like that? How can you create that on a more local level? And how can you supply that on a local level as well? So when it comes to a supply chain, if, we, if at the moment we're noticing where these supply chains are, are moving around on a global level, how can we bring it back into the local level and uh, honour some of the local um, companies, the local uh, businesses, the local providers, the local markets? How can you go to these places, especially now, uh, because the next couple of months is going to be interesting, uh, how can you do that now so that you can create these uh, collaborations and these uh, other local supply chains to be able to provide this for your clients? Um, what have we got? Uh, Amanda's, hi Amanda, hey Nick, online consults are going off. I know, right? And it, it may not be because of the fact of however many cases of COVID-19 are around or um, the infection of coronavirus is around. It may not actually be because of the, the, the small numbers of those, but the flow on effects of that is that there isn't confidence in these places and spaces. The flow on effects of that is some uh, governments are making decisions around these things and we don't actually have control over those things. What we do have control over is offering a service. Irrelevant of whether that person has or hasn't or you have or haven't or there is a high risk of you having or haven't uh, had the virus, having that service there provides a stable income for your practice and a stable and safe way for somebody to have a um, trusted advisor in on their health and their well-being. Uh, Nick says most of China is back at work now and production is dialed up. That's very cool to know, especially in the building industry that your hubby's in. Um, and there are other places and spaces around China and elsewhere um, that may have um, some flow on effects in the coming months. So um, having that backup plan, having a plan B 
And I think that's a really big deal around everything. Um, that would be my second huge takeaway is that there's facts and stories, but having a plan B around the facts uh, is really important. So changing that supply chain to make sure that you do have local providers as well as your international providers so that if there is any flow on effects after this, be it fire, flood, coronavirus or whatever else is coming, having those places and spaces that are a little bit closer to home provides that continuation of care and service. Christina, I think that this is actually a great opportunity for our businesses online. Couldn't agree more. I'm going to bang on about it like you believe. Uh, Christine and Jane, hi, how's it going? Um, awesome. Uh, I've done follow-ups in the cars, cafes, supermarkets, in bed, in car parks and airports. I couldn't agree more. I think it's really helpful to be able to uh, be there for your client wherever you happen to be. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And everything can be so easy using different apps, uh, making an invoice, paying via their credit card or posting things out. I totally agree. I mean, it's one of the reasons that I created the Work From Wherever program is to make sure that people understand you can literally work from wherever. And um, making sure that you have the uh, backup plan for working from wherever. If you are a multimodality practice and you are watching this, um, there are so many uh, uh, Doctor, doctors uh, practices over in um, Canada and the US right now that are actually trying a, um, a work from home day. So what they're doing is having a practice day for if this uh, is actually to occur, how they would go about it. And uh, this is the kind of third point is around contingency plans. So uh, contingency plans for uh, your your um, your Supply chains, we just covered that. Contingency plans for uh, conferences, workshops, or events. You'll see that conferences worldwide are being cancelled or uh, postponed because uh, the heightened risk of viral infection is obviously going to be en masse with the amount of people that are with one and a half metres of one another. Uh, so when it comes to that, how are you going to Put yourself in a place where you can put all of that online and my suggestion is absolutely it can be done uh, teleseminars are amazing plus they have the added benefits of being able to be recorded they also are being able to be recorded and therefore sent out to um, the people who attended whereas live events it costs a fortune to get these things recorded whereas online you can record it it can go out and it can be a, a, over a certain amount of time now one of the biggest events uh, that was happening in Texas uh, last month, yep, the end of last month. Uh, it got cancelled, it was a two-day event, but then it got turned into a two-week tele-summit and uh, all of the attendees got the recordings for that as well. So 750 people were going to that event and uh, they cancelled the actual live event, but then they had all of the other opportunities to create something really cool online and create a whole um, ongoing theme around it. So um, not only are these things able to be done from an, a um, consultative perspective, how can you do that and practice that if you are in a multimodality practice? How could it look um, for a practice day about working from home? And how does it look for uh, your staffing? What does that look like if you have receptions, if you have how have you got the systems in place to be able to get them to be a virtual receptionist or a virtual assistant? And what does that look like? Because uh, there is going to be a flow and effect for that. And uh, what systems do you have in place for that? Um, many organisations in, um, and you can read a lot of these articles in uh, Forbes and Business Insider, they're all distilling that they are having these practice work from home days or they split days where certain people are going to be on and certain people are going to be off and uh, seeing how that works for them, their families and if they've got the systems in place. Many of these have, have broken down systems when it comes to reporting or communicating whereas uh, I use things like Asana for our team meetings um, and our, uh, our ongoing um, projects and how to track our ongoing projects. I also use Slack to communicate with my team members. Um, we, I have a virtual team, so um, one of my team members is up in uh, Townsville, the other one is over in Perth. And uh, how do we create the systems to make sure that we've all got 
the right systems to be able to talk to one another and keep your business going. Uh, other things that you might want to consider um, are if your online system is able to uh, actually do it with hardware, and this is one of the things that they found with these bigger organizations in the US, is that they didn't have the microphones that they needed. Uh, some of them uh, were missing the, uh, you know, the, the background um, hardware up updates, so they had to look after that. So having a little practice session for what that could look like for you and your business is highly suggested. Okay, contingency plans continue with things like diverse, um, diverse revenue streams. Now, uh, many of you guys who have ever done my trainings before, and definitely the ones that have done uh, a journey or the work from wherever program, understand that we talk about um, the business model, the ideal business model. And what that looks like is you're having, not putting all your eggs in one basket per se. So one-on-one -on -one consultations become a part of your ecosystem of where income comes into your business. As you start growing and you've done your one-on-one -on -one consultations and you have some confidence, you're going to be uh, prescribing uh, remedies and you'll be able to get the profit from those remedies. Now that's two income streams. But if you're sick and you have to be at home and you don't have those remedies on you, then you have to find other ways to do that. So uh, finding things like Vitaly, Oriya, uh, Oborn, patient ordering systems for our um, suppliers, they're all ways to get remedies while they're not there, which is great. Uh, online consultations is another way. So having online consultations, follow-ups is another way of doing it. Having programs where you create online consultations mixed with education along the way, and then you're going to be getting recurrent income from that. Then you could be creating e-courses. Now this is prime time for creating a 14-day e-course. Listen to me, people. A 14-day e-course. How many days are people being isolated for? And isolation is a horrible thing, but if we can create a reframe, like uh, Robin said in another group, around a home, a home holiday, a home study holiday, 14 days to learn everything about your body that you wish you'd have heard in high school. 14 days to um, bounce back from the immune hit that you didn't know you'd have. 14 days to um, a understand everything there is to know about your thyroid condition. 14 days, it's time to create that because that's an easy, easy thing for somebody to, if they get have to go into self-isolation, you have 14 little chunks to be able to teach them that you spent three to four to five or even more years accumulating that information that you can chunk down for them in a really easy, beautiful way and then they can get good information every day and not have to be suckers on looking at you know this clickbait all about their their uh, isolation and, and how it might be affecting them so start to consider other ways oh staycation e-course diana i love that staycation e-course now consider these um, alternative methods of getting income through whilst sharing your message of health and wellbeing. Um, now, it could be e-courses. It can also be an affiliate of other e-courses. Many of you guys might not have created an e-course or don't know how to. Hint, hint, I've got an e-course on that. Um, but you can quite easily grab somebody else's e-course and be an affiliate for theirs, especially if you don't have the, the time, effort, or energy to do it. Then you might go and um, grab somebody else's uh, e-course and spruik it. Make sure that somebody, you know, you've checked it out, you agree with what that person's saying, and then share it with all of your, um, your other clients that might particularly need it. You can do a small promotion on that and then everybody gets to win. You get uh, the RRP markup on the, uh, or a commission for sharing that and affiliating that. And it's something that you believe in. It's something that's um, true for you. You just didn't have the time to share it, to, to create it. And then your clients get the information that they need in a really positive and professional way. So consider diversifying. Places and spaces that you haven't thought of to um, create money coming into your practice and create an opportunity for your clients to learn and continue to get um, excellent natural health care from you and the people that you know uh, in ways that might not have been your usual. 
Uh, what else? Affiliate in sharing, uh, supply chains. Yes. So that's all the diversifying and contingency plans. Now, um, when it comes to your mindset, these are the times when it's very easy to see all of the problems. All of the problems. Oh, there's a problem over there. Problem over there. They made that really loud. I better listen to that. There's a problem over there. But we are solution focused. Uh, our, us as practitioners, we're always looking for the solution, aren't we? For our, our, our bodies, our friends' bodies, our clients' bodies. We're always looking for a solution for the newest and most different uh, weird and wacky things that are coming out in health and well-being. We can be solution focused when it comes to our business and our mindset as well. So notice where your mind is wandering off in Problemville and start to see the solutions, not see the problems. Next one. This and this space around you is the bit that you can control. This. You can't control. Consider the things that are in your control and what you can do something about versus the things that are literally out of your control that you cannot do anything about. The things that are out of your control, the amount of time, energy, effort and money that take you away from the things that you can control is going to impact your business, your mindset and the health of yourself and others around you. So focus on what you can control. If you can control your hand washing, if you can control a sign up in your practice, if you can control creating a webinar that's going to be helpful, if you can control uh, the things that you can do something about, focus on those and ignore the things that you can't in your own space or your own capacity do anything about. So focus on what you can do and focus on what you can't do. Because it can be completely overwhelming thinking about all the things that you can't do or all the possibilities that could happen instead of focusing on what you can do in this very moment and just do the one thing that matters in this moment for you, your family and your clients. Do the one thing that matters in this moment that you can do for you, your family or your clients. All right, lastly, uh, facts versus stories, control, see solutions, not problems, and uh, make sure that you are uh, getting, yes, yeah, staying in your own lane right now is so important. I couldn't agree with you more, Diana. Goodness, you're on a roll today. So yes, staying in your own lane is hugely important. Um, being able to focus on what you can do something about. If you can do things locally, do them locally. If you can uh, focus on the ways in which you can go online, do it. Practice it before you need it before any of those things, um, you know, ever come up. Plus, you may not never need, never eat, need it in the long run, but knowing that you have the choice there is an amazingly empowering position to be in. This is the thing. You can be completely empowered by what you are doing in your business and your practice right now rather than being disempowered. And by you being empowered about how you're diversifying, how you're doing things locally, how you're connecting and communicating with your clients and how you're disrupting the way that things could be done in the future. By being empowered like this, you're empowering your clients to be empowered by their own health and well-being and the choices they're making as well. So consider how you can empower yourself by the things that you can do and then how can you empower your clients with the knowledge that they need to have, with the facts over the stories and how can you be the one that they're looking to for health, um, health well-being uh, advice and what can you do right in this moment? Go on, write that blog post that you know you have in the back of your mind. Go on, write that social media post that you have in the back of your mind. Go on, write that sign for your um, your your clinic practice and go and make sure that you have sent an email and actually voiced something about what's currently happening in the world because you're a trusted advisor to these people already and they want to hear from you around the facts rather than the stories. Lastly, be honest. If you're worried about this stuff, the more you can share that you're worried, 
And the more that you can vocalize what's going on for you and then come down to the facts of what you can do about it, it's going to be so much more helpful to other people who need to voice their worries as well, rather than their adrenal, adrenals going out of hand and then their immune systems going out of hand. So they can voice it and then they can come back to some easy, simple facts around their immune system, around public health and community health and uh, health and safety when it comes to sharing um, of risk factors and other things to do with the community and be there, be part of the solution and rather than part of the problem. Don't hide, be part of the solution, not the problem and uh, be in communication. All right, is there any questions about any of this at the moment? Uh, because it can be a crazy time, but um, it's really, really, really important to notice uh, where your mindset is headed. Um, be, be really forward thinking on what you can do from an information perspective, what you can do th through a communication perspective, and what you can do through a stories versus facts scenario, uh, what you can do through a problems versus solutions scenario. And... Uh, uh, you are trying to find further information you may want to go to the world health organization you might want to go to your state government website uh, and you might also want to um, one of the most inspiring leadership uh, orientated practitioners that i've seen is aviva rom she started a page you can't see it straight from her website because she is holding that semi-private space about being able to share it with her um, clients or through a private link and not making it available on her front, front of her website. So um, if you go and check her out, um, you might be able to find her page on uh, COVID-19 and what she's saying about it when it comes to the facts and what you can do about it and the questions that all of her clients are asking already and being part of that solution rather than the problem. All right. Uh, I am going to also pop a list of possible... Um, possible blog posts or topics. Uh, my top tens, I just put them all together just before I got on here, but I've gone a little over time. So I'll share them in the, in the comment section below and uh, you'll be able to just write an article on that. Just write a social media post on that and be part of that communication that your clients really need. All right, hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, great, Laura, awesome. Nice, Christine. Um, oh, Christine wants, wants to know about the affiliates. You're going to have to go back and have a look. Um, lovely. But uh, the main part of that is around diversifying. There are many other practitioners. If you haven't created an e-course yet, which I highly suggest you do, uh, you have the opportunity to go back and uh, have a look at e-courses. I've got a DIY e-course for practitioners um, e-course myself that you can create your own e-course from. But uh, if you haven't created one and there is other practitioners that have created them, you can become an affiliate for those practitioners because they're trusted people for you. They're going to say the same things you are. You don't have to go to all that effort to create one and you can take their content, make sure that it's in alignment with you and then share it with all of your clients and get the affiliate pay up for sharing it with your clients, which is like an RRP upgrade on your remedies. So you get that little a little bit from the top for sharing it. All right, hopefully this has been helpful and uh, stay safe people. Consider the ways that you are doing business, consider the ways that you are communicating and consider the ways that you are connecting with your own mind to get you through this really interesting time that we are living through uh, in the world right now. All right, catch you guys later, bye.